Good afternoon, class. This is the week seven Monday lecture, continuation of trusses and a review for exam number one. Here is an example truss that we're going to take a look at. Uh, three panels at three meters. This is an easy way to do dimensions, three at three meters. And the reason for that is consider this to have, uh, say, 10 panels. You'd be doing three meters 10 times across there. You could say 10 at three meters. This is just a convenient way to uh, actually uh, dimension trusses. Okay, it's a little out of proportion, but again, this is three meters also. We have two forces, uh, 15 kN at E, and we have a horizontal force at C is equal to 5 kN. The first step in solving a truss is you need to solve for your reactions. Uh, dy is 12.2 kN, AY is 2.4 KN, and A has an X component equal to 5 KN to counter this 5 KN in the positive X direction. I can't emphasize enough, check your reactions. If your reaction is wrong, you spend 20 minutes solving your truss, your truss is wrong. Uh, if you have a, a lot larger truss and you spend 45 minutes solving it, and you made a mistake on your uh, reactions, um, all that work is for nothing. Okay, it's all wrong. So check your reactions. You take moments about A, solve for D sub Y, some forces in Y, you get A sub Y. You could then take moments about D, and you should get the same value for A sub Y as you did using sum of forces. That's simple. The other thing you can do is take moments about A, solve for D sub Y, take moments about D, solve for A sub Y, then you, your check would be sum of forces in Y should be equal to zero. So you have a check always, and I encourage you to always have a check. Okay, so I'm gonna go to pin A. I like working from the left to the right. Okay, as we as we go through the the solutions. So here's pin A. The vertical reaction, which is 2.48. Horizontal reaction of 5 kN. And, and you won't, and there's some trusses I won't even know where the, the compression numbers are at. They're just too complicated. So what we're going to do is we're just going to assume all of our members that we don't have values for are in tension. Okay, so there is AF. And here is AB. And we know the slope on AB is three horizontal, four vertical. So this is a three, four, five. And again, if your answer comes out to be negative, it just means instead of tension, it's compression. And we change compression. That was one of my cautions. You have to keep track of the compression, okay? Because you've, you've changed the direction. And I'll show you. And I, I did this on the last example I did in the last session. I'll emphasize that again and show you how I do that. This is the one thing that can really mess students up in terms of calculations is that compression in there. And again, tension and compression has nothing to do with whether that tension or compression is, is in the plus or minus direction, either in the X or Y component. It has nothing to do with that. Okay, it's just... What, and I, I'll show you one on an example member that we do. Just look at 
again, the your coordinates, you know, plus and minus directions. It has nothing to do with tension or compression. It's how it's drawn on your on your particular diagram. So let's solve this. Uh, we have two unknowns in the x direction. So what we have to do is start in the y direction. We can solve for AB. So I'm going to sum forces in the y direction equal to zero. And I have plus 2.48. Actually, this is 2.78. It's 2.78. Okay, 2.78 is that one. So I'm going to have 2.78 directed up. And this is in the, again, positive y direction. So this is plus the um, y component then is going to be 4 fifths AB. equal to zero. And see, this the math is very simple. We don't have, no, there are no moments. It's just, this is these are particle problems. What we did back in chapter two, first thing we, first problem we looked at were particle problems. These are all particle problems. So all you're doing is summing forces, X and Y, adding and subtracting. That's it. And so we get AB, and AB is going to come out to be negative, minus 3.48 kilonewtons. I'm not going to write it with a minus sign. I'm going to write it tension or compression. So this is going to be 3.48 compression. And here's my diagram. And actually, let me go one step further, and I'll show you, show you what happens now. Okay, that's compression. So, some forces in the x direction equal to zero. I have minus five plus a f. And so I look here and I go, well, this is in the, this would be in the positive. So it'll be three fifths plus three fifths, maybe. No, it won't, because we found it was compression. Okay. So here's what I'm going to suggest you do. You don't want to do any erasures here. This is how you solve it. I'm going to use, I use a red pen or pencil. And I come in with red and say, this is actually compression. So when I go back to do this sum forces in the X, I see this and I go, oh yeah, this is compression and it's in the negative direction. The X component's in the negative. If I didn't do that, I'm just looking back at this and not even seeing what I did here. This, it will be a positive X component. When in fact, we do this, it's a negative X component. So this is minus, and this is three-fifths AB. Equal to zero. Okay, so AF then is equal to 7.08 tension, kilonewtons tension. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my truss and I'm going to write the answers on my truss. So AB is 3.48 don't have to put units, compression, and this is uh, 7.08 tension. 
but it's, this is very, this is, to me, this is the key. Besides getting to your reactions, this is important is keeping track of compression. And this is the way I do it. Because you, you're relying on this diagram. And if it's compression at this end, it's compression at this end. And compression is always directed into the pin. Now at this end, and we're going to go to B, okay, this ends up being in the, if you look in the X, X is in the positive X direction. Here, X was in the negative direction. So it has nothing to do with tension and compression. It's just how each member is directed into a pin. Since it's compression, it's going to be directed in this way. So let me let me show you uh, pin B. You can see I'm squeezing in, and in, in you can see this. So I'm going to go to pin B. And so I have compression coming in. Which is going to be this 2.48. And the slope is a 3, 4, 5. I'm going to show BC up here. This is BC is tension. And I have BF. I'm going to show that as tension also. Again, tension is away from the pin. Compression is into the pin. Here's BC. Okay. That now it doesn't matter. I, I I can use I can use some in the X or Y. It doesn't matter now because if I have just one unknown in each one of the directions. I'll just sum forces in the X equal to zero. BC plus, okay, now this is in, now uh, when you look at this, this is three fifths of 2.48. See how easy the calculations are, just keeping track of your plus and minus signs. And BC then is, again, that's going to come out to be negative. So BC is minus 2.08 kilonewtons. And so BC, I'm going to write as 2.08 kilonewtons compression. So this is 2.08 compression. So I wrote that 2.08 compression here. And I sum forces in the y direction now. Equal to zero. BC's tension, and, and, and again, that's going to be in um, it's, it's negative. Actually, that's BF. I'm sorry. BC's over here, so this is BF. So here I have BF down, and this is up directed in the positive direction. In the y direction, this is four fifths. Seven point zero eight or three point four eight.
equal to zero. So BF then is equal to, again, it's positive, 7.278 BF, 2.78 BF. So BF is 2.78. And this is kilonewtons. It's positive, so it's tension and it stays tension. So BC over well, here should be 2.08. And this is 2.78 as you go through that. So what you need to do is keep track of your plus and minus. Uh, I won't continue on with the rest. The rest of this basically is the same thing. Um, pin C gets to be a little bit more, I'll, I'll draw the uh, free body diagram for pin C, gets to be a little bit more uh, complicated. What I would do, is come back down here to, I'm going to leave it for you to finish. Come back down here to pin F. Okay, so we know this, we know this, this, and this. Again, using the, no, the notation that we have through here. And then I would come to pin C, solve pin C. And then a check, there's a check on this. Once you've solved everything in here and once you solve it, and let's see, see what I have for the numbers as you go through this. Okay, um, FE is 9.17 tension. So FE is 9.17 tension. FC is 3.48 compression. So this is 3.48 compression. ED is 9.17 tension. This is this is easy. Um, what does this one have to be? This is this is basically this 9.771. This also has to be 9.71 when you sum forces in the X. The, I've got 15 down. This has to be 15 here also. So it, this ends up being real simple. When you have something like this, you can almost do it by inspection. So this is 15 kN tension. And then the, the key is this last uh, member out here, this diagonal member out here. And that is a CD is 15.3 compression. Okay. Now, you've done all that work. You're, you're sure your reactions are correct. So you're sure of that. Now the question is, did you make any mistake in here? And here's the check on that. Go to pin D. It would look very similar. It would look just reversed in terms of direction that you're looking at. Same thing as you did here at A. Okay, so I go to pin D and I would solve pin D. And you should get this and this. Okay, you should get those answers. Basically, what you're looking at is what's because you know this this is the key is this particular one right here. So that's what I would do is check uh, uh, joint D out there.
So that's your check. Just run that. And what you would do there is just some forces in the y direction uh, get vc and it should be the same as over here is what you what you saw for uh, when you went around with this and you get this number here also it should be the same and so that'd be your unknown so pin d I think I'm running the check on pin D. So here's D. Uh, you have 12.2. And then your unknowns uh, would be DE. And this unknown would be DC. And again, this is going to be a three, four, five slope. Now let's do this and see, see what we come up with on this one. So I some forces in the y direction. equal to zero. I have 12.2 plus the three-fifths DC equal to zero. And so DC then is, I'm going to get my calculator out here real quick. See what we got. Zero eight. Okay, should be your check, man. Your check. Okay, new topic. I'm going to show you how you can determine that you have three force Show you a couple of different trusses here. A, B, C, and D. 
Let's suppose I have some force out here. Say 10 kilonewtons. You can't identify by inspection members in a trust that are zero force. It can be very convenient. In other words, you just get rid of members in there that have no force in solving the trust. And you can do this by inspection if you know a couple of the rules to, to look at. I'm gonna say that this member BD has no force. We've got a 5K, uh, 10K in force up here. This is zero force. Reason I know that, I'm gonna go down here to pin D. So here's D. So this is DC and this is DA. And here's BD. I don't know what. Yeah, you know, I think this I can all tension. So here's BD. So here's pin D. This is my free body diagram. And if I sum forces in the Y equal to zero. I've got BD and nothing else. There is no other force. And since there isn't a force there, BD has to be equal to zero. So BD has to be equal to zero. And what I would call this is a T-intersection. If you see a T-intersection, you need to look at that, that intersection point. If it, the members coming in, it forms a T. That member coming in vertically is going to be a zero force member. If you have a member coming into a pin, either tension or compression, it doesn't matter, like this, this is also at an angle, this is also a zero force member because this member is gonna have a Y component. And since there is no Y force here, that Y component has to be equal to zero. And if that Y component is zero, then this entire member value has to be equal to zero. So I sort of, I call this, and it's a sort of a modified uh, T intersection or an angular T intersection, some force coming in at an angle. Okay, without a, uh, in this case, the way we have it drawn, and typically it's in the Y direction, uh, a Y component of force, this thing has to be equal to zero. Let me show you another. Another member here. Let's do this. So members here. This member is zero. This member is zero. So what you're looking at in terms of solution then is just this truss. And you got rid of those two members and whatever the forces are, this is what you're looking at. Okay, there's nothing, there's zero here. You can just take them out. What these do provide, they could provide some stability uh, to the truss, uh, as this one can provide some stability. Uh, see these on roof trusses, particularly the wood uh, roof trusses. You can see this vertical member in there. Again, it's just providing stability uh, to the structure itself, but it 
it's not there to carry loads and these aren't there to carry loads. It's just this stability uh, situation that you're looking at. Let me show you another configuration. This is sort of something I like to show in a, an actual problem. What is there? A, Exam. Let's suppose that uh, let's give this a reaction here, a roller reaction here, vertical member. So this is a. B, C, D, E, and let's put some force out here. And you're asked to solve this truss. I look at this and I say, oh, well, that's zero and that's the zero. And so I reduce this truss into something that looks like this, much smaller truss to take a look at. How do I know these are zero? Well, if you draw this member, okay, and you sum forces in the x in the x direction, there is no x force here. So this x component has to be equal to sum forces in the x has to be equal to zero. There is no x. Here, sum forces in the y, again, there's no y force. So this has to be equal to y equal to zero. Okay, there is no there is no force in the y direction. So that's zero and that's the zero. Show one more here. Sometimes I put a problem on a test and say just something real quick. I said just identify the zero force members in there. Some forces here. This is zero, and this is zero. Again, there's no there's no force in the y, y direction when you get down here. And if there's no force in the y direction, these have y components have to be equal to zero. So you identify these actually in a, if, you know, this is on a, a, a test or something like that. Um, that's all you'd have to do is put zero on there. Now, if they're not zero force members, that would be wrong, of course, uh, but you can quickly do that and you might simplify your trust significantly by identifying those. Sometimes they could carry on once it's zero, it just goes, it, it can just go on. Uh, as you go through this. So that's the concept of zero force members. Okay. I think that's going to be it for trusses today. We'll continue next, next week on trusses. We'll go through the solution. Uh, yeah, the solutions are posted on Canvas, so I'll make a couple of comments about them. I also put the I also put the um, statistics on there. The average on the uh, exam one uh, was seventy five percent. That's a very high average, one of the highest averages ever had in a statics exam one test. Um, high grade is 42 out of 40. 
had a 40 out of 40 and a 35 out of 40. And I do curve if necessary. And I like to keep the average somewhere over 70, 73 to 74%. And I would, I would normally curve a, a, an exam. It added points to your score. But the uh, average was 75% for the class. So I'm not going to uh, add any points. I can basically put a curve on that. So, okay, here's the solution, exam one solution. Now you should um, take a look at the Sam. Basically, this is the a free body diagram. It's just a uh, system of forces, and I asked for the resultant uh, and the uh, angle counterclockwise with respect to the positive x-axis. This is just plus and minus, adding your plus and minuses. Very, very straightforward problem. Okay, the result resultant was 901 newtons. You sum the x components, sum the y components, square root of the sum of the x's squared plus sum of the y squared. That gives you resultant. And then I always, and this ended up being uh, straightforward on this one, I would always recommend you draw a uh, the four quadrants, one through four, and draw your x and y component, and it tells you which quadrant you're in. In this case, you're in the first quadrant, so the angle that you calculated was, you didn't have to do anything with it. That was the angle, okay, measured from the uh, positive x-axis counterclockwise. Uh, you know, if you're down down here in the third third quadrant, or, or in the, say you're in the fourth quadrant, you calculate this angle, uh, you'd have to do 360 minus that to get this one. Um, if you're over here, you'd have to add 180, okay? So this helps if you sketch it out, you know what you're doing in here, okay? I think when folks had a little problem with this, it was with this 60 degree angle. If you notice, typically this, this 30 degree angle is referenced to the X axis. Uh, this is reference to the y-axis. So the x component here would be a cosine. The x component here is actually a sine function. So people, if they um, miss this particular component, it was the sine and cosine to get the x and y component. I, if everything else is right, I don't know, took a couple of points off, but I, I should have noted that on there. That was the only problem I saw with uh, the exam one. Okay, exam uh, question number two. This was a, a problem that we did in class uh, exactly. Let me see if I can find my exam. I think I have Sam Andy here. I want to Yes, I do have the exam. So this is the problem and we did I did one in class very very similar to that and spent some time uh, looking at that lost that uh, this is the second problem so what we want to do is the uh, magnitude of the component of that uh, acting along BC. Okay, so here's BC. And basically, this is a, a dot product. 
So what we, what we had to do is just get the unit vector of BC. Okay. And C to B on that one. So this is the um, dimensions, the X, Y, the Z coordinates. Okay. From uh, C to B. So this is the unit vector that you got. And then the dot product is just the, uh, the force, the IJK components of the force uh, dot uh, with the unit vector. And it's a simple multiplication. So you multiply the I's 30, two thirds uh, plus uh, minus 45 minus two thir uh, one third, and then uh, the five times two thirds. This is 50, no problem. This is 50 times two thirds. And then you just add these up. Um, some of you took these values and put them onto a radical, squared them, and came up with that answer. That was to get the perpendicular component to that, from the force, uh, to that axis or whatever, wherever you're taking that. And I didn't, I really didn't even talk about that. Uh, I think I mentioned it said, we won't do anything with the perpendicular uh, from a force to some axis. We're just concerned about the, that parallel, you know, what is that force along a particular axis system? So you just add those together and that's what you end up, end up with. Okay, the third problem. Again, these aren't the issue with getting this is is getting your uh, unit vectors to work with your uh, convert your vector quantity into Cartesian vector, and this was this was the question. Right here. So I, I wanted the equations. I'm going to go through all the, you know, all the components. So you just had to, again, it's, it's a little difficulty. You have to spend some time getting your IJK components for each of these, but you had two cables and a strut. And so I did the AB, and this is the a uh, unit vector. Okay, and again, there may be a couple of maybe sign problems, and I noted that it wouldn't take off maybe a point or so. Point. Okay, so you get the unit vectors for A, B, A, C, and A, D. And basically, the equation is some forces, uh, some action of forces is equal to zero. So it's the AB, AC, AD vectors plus the, the 200 pounds that you had the uh, weight of the crate. And then I went ahead and wrote out the entire summation of equation. These are the I's, J's, and K's. And the actual equations then the I, this is the form that I wanted to see, but that's a lot of you put sum of forces X, Y, and Z. That, that's fine. Um, so your I equation, so you have your I's equal to zero, your J's equal to zero, and K's equal to zero. Those are your three equations. Okay. I think it was a little difficult trying to solve for one of them, but solutions you can get the, the magnitudes smallest to the largest over here. But this is what I was looking for. It's very difficult to grade. Some of you, this was the format that I used, presented in class, and some of you used something different. It was very hard to follow exactly what you did you know, all over the place, but you can see. You could put it in a, in a really 
not even maybe three fourths of a page, and step by step. This is, and we'll we'll have three dimensional problems uh, yet. I'll be in the next exam. So this is sort of the format that I'm looking at. And then the uh, last question, similar to a couple of problems I would in class. Um, had a 20 kilogram lamp times 9.81 gives you a Newtons. And we wanted the force in each of the cords, DF, DE, uh, DC, CA, and CB. Basically, you have two particle problems, and D was straightforward. Solving for D. Okay, so you have this, and it's just a sum of forces uh, in the X, and sum of forces in the Y. Okay. So 392 for DE. And then DC is 339 newtons. Now, when you get over here to C, a little bit different. Uh, we're getting slopes here and an uh, angle here. So we had uh, CB and CA. What made this problem different was that your unknowns here. It didn't matter how, how you started here uh, in the X or Y, you just had one unknown in each direction. Here, you have two unknowns in each of these, okay? There, so you couldn't solve directly as you did up here. And so some forces in the X and some forces in the Y. And then what you do, once you have those two equations, you can, and I just used a, solve for one of the, in one of the equations, solve for one of the unknowns and substitute it back into the other. And I was able to solve for CA and then put that back into an equation and end up with uh, CB down here. Okay, so some forces in the X and then some forces in the Y, you got two equations, two unknowns, solve for however, however you wanna solve for. Okay, a couple of different ways you can do it. Solve for either CA or CB and go back to an equation and solve for one of the unknowns and then substitute back into another equation and get the other, second unknown, but substitution. Extra credit. Uh, it's not an easy extra credit. Basically, you solve this one by trial and error. I'll show you why. So we had a springs. You're given the, the stiffness of the springs, um, unstretched length, of three meters on this. Uh, we're pulling um, with a force on this cable of 175 Newtons. When that is the case, the question was how how far out did they did this 175 uh, Newtons pull this spring, which is designated by this distance D. And just some forces in the x direction here 175 2t sine of theta okay that'd be the uh, x components for those and then taking this t sine of theta 
of s equal to uh, 87.5. And then I looked at this triangle area down here that had this D in there. Okay, we have dimensions given. So this is D, this is three. This angle is theta. And so we want to know this hypotenuse. We know how much this stretched. So what is this hypotenuse? Well, it's actually um, two squared plus three squared. The square root of two squared plus three squared is this distance. And so you can write sine of theta is equal to d times this hypotenuse, which is square root of two squared Okay. Plus three squared. So much of this right down here. And then we had sine theta over here. And you can substitute back in this equation and end up with this and with d and, and d squared, you can't you can't solve directly, it's just trial and error. Once you do that, you put it in a situation that you can look at. And so I'm start picking numbers. I'd pick even numbers, one. To, so if you do that, you get, well, hey, I'm in between, and then you can start looking at fractions, decimals, and you do that. Okay, so it's just trial and error. Okay. That's it for this time. If you look at your schedule, uh, you see that um, obviously spring break is after next week. I exam two is scheduled for Wednesday of next week, and I this was scheduled at the beginning of class. And the reason I put it there was we've covered a lot of material. You know, once you finish a chapter or two chapters, you, you're not going to have a test immediately because you got to do problems and just can't do it. You got to go on to the next chapter. So we started uh, the chapter on structural analysis. A lot on there. Well, three and four have, or four and five have been, chapter four and five have been finished several weeks ago. And I did not want to carry that over past spring break and try to have the exam afterwards. That's just too much. You're you're gone. You've been gone from that for a long time, and I don't think you want to study for over spring break. So we're going to have exam two, which is over chapters four and five, Wednesday of next week. Wednesday, I will have a review. Okay, give you a heads up for that again for over the weekend. Review for uh, chapters four and five, exam two. We'll do that Wednesday. Uh, and so that's the schedule we have. And I think that works out for the best uh, rather than putting it off after spring break. We'll have exam two Wednesday of next week. We'll see you next time.